All right, this is the last example we'll do, and I promise we'll start moving on to um, we'll start moving on to second order, and then degenerate perturbation theory after. But I want to do this example because it's actually using matrices, and a lot of systems, especially two-state systems, um, they have two by two matrices. So we gotta we really need to know how to work with these. Okay, so without further ado, consider the matrix representing the perturbed Hamiltonian of a two-state system. Okay, so immediately I see that epsilon. This is our parameter, right? It's kind of like our lambda, um, and it's it's we we want it to be small, right? It's small here, and here they even say epsilon is a small parameter. Okay. Um, as a side note, what does it mean for a perturbation to be small? Our whole assumption is this in perturbation theory is this perturbation is somehow smaller than the unperturbed Hamiltonian. But what does it mean for something to be small when it talks about matrices? This is kind of an unclear question. So think of that in the back of your head right now. But we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about that a bit later. Okay, anyways, immediately I see that we can write our unperturbed Hamiltonian as well as just one zero zero two, right? And then our perturbation we can write as epsilon times so it would be 1, 1, 1, and 3, right? If you add these two together, you'll get this guy, which you can verify yourself. All right, we got to find the first order connections to the eigenvalues, this and that. All right, easy enough. How did they get these two eigenvalues? Well, since, the, since our unperturbed Hamiltonian is diagonal, it's just going to be the entries, right? And immediately, I can also say what the eigenvectors are. So let's call the state, um, the first energy as one, zero. And this is nothing more than one, zero, right? If you multiply this, you'll just get the same thing with an eigenvalue of one. Similarly, um, the second state, we'll write two, zero. And this is nothing more than zero, one. Okay, it's just the, uh, the normal basis. Anyways, let's calculate these energy corrections. E1, 1 is going to be equal to delta H11, right? And delta H11 is nothing more than 1, 0, delta H10. Okay, so let's compute it. 1, 0, the bra, is just going to be the complex conjugate transpose of this guy. And since this is obviously real, it's just going to be 1, 0, right? We just exchange the rows and the columns. Our perturbed Hamiltonian is epsilon, 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 three epsilon, and then one zero is nothing more than one zero. Okay, so what does this give us? Let's multiply the right first, so we get epsilon. Well, this is two by two, and then this is two by one, so the result is gonna be two by one. It's gonna be epsilon, and then epsilon. Okay, and then we multiply these guys out, it's just going to be epsilon. There we go. Pretty simple, right? S similarly, E2, the first order correction to the second energy state, delta H22, and uh, it's going to be equal to, again, let's just write it out, 2, 0, delta H, 2, 0. And then, okay, 2, 0, the bra of this, now it's going to be 0, 1. And then again, I'm, I'll just pull out the epsilon this time. And then we got 1, 1, 1, 3. And then 0, 1. Okay. Multiplying this out, what do we get? We get epsilon times 0, 1. And then boom, boom, that's going to give us a 1. Boom, boom, that's going to give us a 3. And then when we multiply this out, we get 3 epsilon. So that's pretty interesting. The second order correction is 3 times greater than the first order correction. Cool. Uh, this is just a very simple example. Nothing uh, big here. Let's keep moving on.